Low security inmates tend to live in dormitories. These are large open air facilities that house dozens of inmates and you have a lot of room to move around so who you're with is not that big of a deal. High security inmates tend to be housed in cells. This is a 10 by 12 concrete box that you're stuck in for months or even years at a time. So having a good celly can make your time a lot easier and having a bad celly can make your time a little slice of hell. One of the best cellies I ever had was Scooby. And I've mentioned him before. He was a heroin addict and it's always going to come up whenever I talk about him that he was a heroin addict because it was kind of his defining characteristic. It was what he did with his days, was worried about getting heroin. That said, he was also uh, smart, kind, considerate. He was a good guy to be around and to live with. We did time together just fine. He was in an interesting situation financially. You see, most inmates, and no surprise here, they're poor. They have no resources. This is an environment where a job generally pays nothing. If you're lucky and you get a good job, it pays five, six, seven cents an hour. You can't save up money earning five, six, seven cents an hour. And their families had very little to do with them. Maybe they would send them 50 bucks a year on their birthday or something like that. But again, this isn't the type of money that really changes an inmate's life. Other inmates are, at least by prison standards, wealthy. Perhaps they were successful criminals and saved up some money before they got arrested. Or don't forget that about 8% of inmates are veterans. Many of them have military pensions, which amounts to an incredible amount of money in an environment where 10 or $12 is considered a paycheck. Scooby somehow managed to be both. His uncle was a successful businessman and would send him money regularly, and not small amounts of money. I saw Scooby spend thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of this guy's money on heroin. But occasionally, Scooby's uncle, understanding that his nephew was a drug addict, would realize that Scooby was asking for too much money, that he was doing too much drugs. And this is a problem, because a heroin addict who's doing too much and who has unrestricted access to his drug of choice might kill himself. It's a very common way for addicts to die. And it's not like Scooby's uncle could send just a little bit of money and say, here, just spend this money on food and your TV. Don't go buy heroin with it, because, of course, Scooby would sell whatever he had to get the drugs. That's what a drug addict will do. So Scooby's uncle would cut him off, cold turkey, say, you gotta clean up, I'm not sending you any money for the next while. Scooby, being a drug addict, would often continue to do heroin, and this is a very dangerous situation for an addict to be in, to go from having as much as they need to having none. He would get himself hundreds of dollars in debt, sometimes even as much as a thousand dollars in debt to the couple of drug dealers on the yard. For any other inmate, this would be fatal. This is an environment where people get killed over you know, 10, 20, 50 dollars that they owe because owing money is very disrespectful to the guy you owe it to. You should pay that debt. Scooby's in debt hundreds of thousands of dollars, but the dope man knows that this has happened before. Scooby's done this before, and he always pays off his debt. Maybe his uncle relents and sends him the money eventually. Or, more likely, Scooby finds some way to hustle up the money because that dude had moves. I mean, he could hustle. One of the memories of my early years in prison that really stands out was a day whenever I was alone in my cell. Scooby was at work. He worked in the kitchen helping prepare all of the food for the yard. His primary job was to push the meal carts, which are large aluminum carts that look something like this to all of the buildings. Bear in mind, there's 200 inmates in each building and there's five buildings on the yard. So that's a lot of these carts filled with food that Scooby had to push. The electronic lock on the door to my cell opened. The officer in the tower is able to just press a button and open doors in the prison. 
and I heard Scooby yell out the door as he approached the door to the officer, Hey, I just need to get my inhaler. I'm going to be right back. He came in, and from his demeanor, it was clear that he was lying. He wasn't just coming in to get an inhaler. He, he had done something sneaky. And then he walked back out very quietly, furtively, made sure that no officers could see him, and ran to one of the aluminum carts that he had pushed into the building. Ran back with a box of apples. I, I don't mean a shoebox, like a little box of apples. I mean a, a box, like you would go to the farm and get a box of apples. There was a hundred apples in this thing. And he real quick handed it to me and went, Put that under the bed, I'll be right back. I couldn't believe it. Scooby had stolen a hundred apples out of the kitchen. This is an incredible theft. And then he came in with another box. And another one. He'd stolen four boxes out of the kitchen by stacking them all the way to the top of one of these aluminum carts. And then after pushing it to the building, pretending that he needed to get his inhaler in order to get his cell open. You see, apples themselves have very little value, but one of the things that Scooby would do to supplement his income whenever he needed to get some heroin was manufacture alcohol. Uh, pruno is what it's called. Uh, inmate manuf manufactured alcohol is what the cops call it. Basically, and it's a pretty simple process, you take an apple and you grate it against a homemade grater, and you keep doing this until you're out of apples, and you have a giant bag of pulpy, disgusting, fermenting fruit. You add some sugar and you let it ferment over the course of a couple of days, a week. You keep it warm so that the chemical reaction will continue, and as the fruit rots, it produces alcohol. Once it's done, you get yourself something like a strainer, perhaps a sock. You pour all of the alcohol through it and you strain out the fruit pulp, and you're left with uh, some real booze. I mean, it's uh, stronger than a beer, not quite as strong as hard alcohol, but it will definitely get you there, I suppose is what they'd say. He would make some of this from time to time to supplement his income. You figure they give every inmate, you know, two apples a day. So if he takes his two apples and my two apples and keeps at it for a week, well, that's 35 apples. It adds up to like two cups of pruno, which sell for a couple of bucks a piece. But he didn't need two cups of pruno. He was a thousand dollars in debt. He wanted four or five gallons of pruno. And that is what he made with these 400 stinking apples that he'd stolen out of the kitchen. It was an incredibly large batch that he spent days working on in order to pay off his debt. And he did. He paid off the entire, gosh, I think this was $300 that he still owed on the debt at this point, and managed to make enough extra to get himself monumentally high, because I suppose from a drug addict's point of view, what's the point of doing all that work if you can't get high in addition to paying off your debt? I realize that this isn't necessarily the most uplifting story. It's about uh, an inmate stealing and making booze to pay for his drug debt. But it didn't really hurt anybody. You figure all the inmates on the yard still got apples that week. I guess that they just brought in new ones from the main kitchen. And I suppose if you paid taxes, you know, the year like 2003, 2004, a very small portion of that went to paying off Scooby's drug debt, so congratulations to you. But without considering that very small harm to the taxpayer, there was no real harm done. And I wanted to tell this story because I was going over some of my recent videos, and they're dark, they're nasty, and prison is a dark and nasty place, but it wasn't always terrible. I mean, this was kind of a funny story about my cellmate managing to steal some apples and get high. And that is the thing about prison, is yes, prison is dark and terrible, but there are some funny things that happen from day to day, and this is any time that life is bad. There are moments of good in any terrible situation. I believe they say hope springs eternal, but that's the human condition. So if you feel overwhelmed, like everything is bad, Look for the good. There, there's something, and it may be a very small something, but it's nice to focus on a small something every once in a while instead of just the bad.